Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nicole and Craig Show. Good Hi. morning, everybody. <laughs> I didn't realize he was still talking. Okay. I'm sick today and tired, if anybody can tell. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Craig. It's your turn. It's your turn. It really is. Thanks for watching the show. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say, so who cares? <laughs> Whatever he, Hanson says. He has had a Red Bull. We have this new light <laughs> that is, like, right in my eye right now, so... Hi, Jessica. Good morning. I can't wave to you because I can't reach the stupid Aww, button. Oh, that's so sad. You can't wave now, which is super annoying. What is your deal right now? You had a Red Bull. I'm sick. That's what it is. Uh, now I'll probably be sick in three days. <coughs> oh, God, I can feel the germs. <laughs> All right, I mean, anyway, I... thanks for watching. We're going to have a great show. I am always, as always, am Nicole Hansen, and this is Craig Fremen. Um, it's different because they see it backwards. So oh, that's they're, why you always they're say gonna, that? No, no, that's not why. That joke's old after here, dude. Uh, yeah. Craig Lowe with her shirt. You guys are so cute. Oh, crap. We are coordinating uh, again today. Uh, <laughs> like Thanks, Jessica. We didn't even notice. The lamest brothers and sisters. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know what you guys are thinking. You've got an inspection, and it needs to be a response made or something along those lines, and you don't know how to do it. They probably know how, but you're probably doing it wrong. That's probably true. And that's why Nicole and I are here to educate everyone on how to do inspection and inspection responses, or at least just give you five tips. So hopefully we see some better stuff out there. All right, moving right along. This means number five. Uh, number five, first of all, and you would not believe how many agents do not know what that paragraph actually says, but every agent should read the inspection paragraph. It is paragraph... Uh, it's this one. It's paragraph. Hold on, what's the number? It's right here. It's the, it's the number M. Paragraph M as in Michael. Um, oh, yeah. You should know what that is. You know, it's 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 a couple paragraphs. It's You should know every it's word of it. the whole page, basically. The whole yep. page. There's some things in there that you need to know. They do change it every once in a while, every year. Like, like sometimes something will change on it. I think we went over changes in the contract at the beginning of this year. We did, but I think the changes they made to inspection was very good this year. It's spelled really clearly out that the buyer has to give the seller an opportunity to remedy defects. Yeah, that's something. So make sure when you're, when you're working with a buyer and you're going over a purchase agreement with them, a lot of buyers have this misconception that if anything's wrong with the house, they can get out of it and get their earnest money back. That is not true. You have to give the seller an opportunity to correct the defect. Yep. All right. So... Hold on. I had something else to say about that. Don't touch me. You know you're, you're like walking germ. You're like an infestation. And I tend to read that actual section like E, F, and G. You are going... And H, actually. You're going to read those completely to the client so that they understand what a defect is. If a previous defect is disclosed, like if the seller says the dishwasher is not working, the buyer can't ask for a dishwasher because it's not working. Um, how a defect is defined and basically that, you know, they have to give the seller an opportunity to remedy. A lot of us old school agents will remember the old, like our, our the old board forms that we used to use probably at least 10 years ago now. Um, they used to actually spell out what was and was not considered to be a major defect. And were? What were major no. defects? I don't know. Well, they used to say what was a major what were, <laughs> what, what were defect. No, I don't know. Um, but it used to say like windows that don't open freely. A lot of things like that were actually spelled out in the contract saying that these are not major defects. So a lot of old school agents, we still kind of think that those are the right guidelines or whatever. But those were taken out of there because we don't have the authority to decide that. So that's why that was, that's why we don't use that contract anymore. Yep. Or part of the reason. You know, different financing has different, you know, different, uh, rules for financing. Like whatever. FHA, conventional, whatever. You, you know, you may have a window that doesn't open on an FHA and that's a big deal, but on a conventional, it's not going to be. Yeah. Number five is boring me. So we're moving along to number four. <laughs> Okay, now this is another one that should go back to number five. You have to read that paragraph. I see it all the time where buyers will, uh, you know, they'll do their inspection and then they'll ask for more testing. We want more testing. But the contract clearly states if, if an inspector says you should have this checked out by a structural engineer, you should have it checked out by an HVAC company, that's still on the, that's still the buyer's responsibility. It says it very clearly in the inspection. Yeah, but the problem with that is why would the buyer pay a trip charge 
and then not have the work done because it's the seller's responsibility to do the work if they agree it to the repair. Yeah, I, I guess it is kind of a gray area. It kind of depends. Like I would say too, mold is the biggest one. Um, you know, five years ago, there was a lot of inspectors that weren't licensed to yeah. say, call mold, mold. Yeah. So they would say there's like a biological contaminant or, or an organic like growth or something They're like still, really goofy words that basically just said mold i still think that to this day we still have a lot of inspectors that way i just say it's mold because either yeah. it, it's either biological whatever or mold it doesn't really matter it's going to have to be clean and taken care of yeah so well, when they say if it quacks like a duck it looks like a duck i mean i don't have to do dna tests to you know it's a duck i can see that you know mold it looks like mold well because it tastes like, like mold it's either moss or like mold. It's one of the two. And you got to get rid of both. It looks like it might be moss. Yeah. Because that's the. That's weird. That's the other thing it can be. Because it'll be like moss or whatever instead of mold. But it still has to be whatever. taken care of. So it doesn't matter. It's probably not moss everyone. It's probably mold. It probably is. However, that's why they put it on there. I think I, only I, once you know, ever I've had it not be mold. I don't think I've ever had moss growing. <laughs> Hey, I'm telling you, it had to happen one time. You know how that goes, guys? One time is all it takes. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry, Nicole. She's she's not feeling well, so. Number three. <laughs> Be clear. You know, what does your buyer yes. want and, and how? Like, when you're giving a seller an inspection response or you're working with the buyer, you're preparing the response, you don't just say, like, if, if they say roof leaking, you don't just say roof leaking. That's stupid. The inspector already said the roof's leaking. We know this. What do you want done? Say, fix the roof, whatever. Get the roof inspected, get it certified, get it repaired. Be very clear. It, um, like a lot of like plumbing things, will, will are, this happens to a lot in electrical and things like that. If, if you want something done, you need to ask, you need to specify exactly. And sometimes it's a pain in the butt because Maybe there's a whole bunch of little things, like there's an outlet in this room that doesn't work. There's an outlet in this one. Copy and paste, baby. Copy and paste. Get an amendment or an addendum. There you go. That's why there's an extra extra pages, you know? So here's the thing. I like to be nice. When I put in a buyer's inspection response, all the electrical goes in like number one. All the plumbing goes in like number two. I try to group the contractor, like one thing, like all the things the contractor has to do into one. And then I number it. For the love of God, just number it. I'll get inspections where it's like, they just write and write. And I'm like, could you just do numbers? Because then at least when the other when you're responding back and forth, agree to number one, agree to number two, agree to number three, don't agree to number four, you know, seller's not doing it, or you just leave it off, whatever. It makes everybody's life so much easier. And be clear and concise. Like, don't just write, um, hey, this should be repaired. Like, that's the worst thing ever. Yeah. Because then you're giving the seller a choice to repair it, in my opinion. And that can be interpreted that way. So, you know, just really read what you're sending over and make sure you're very, very clear on and what you're asking for. That's a great tip. <coughs> and I would say every, like, the buyer has, some buyers have an expectation everything's going to be done or something along those lines. I always tell the buyer, look, they're only going to do the things we ask them to do and they're only going to do it the way we ask them to do it. So they need to make sure that they are comfortable with what you write and things like that. And don't try to get too creative either. You know, if I always say this, if you win the lottery and you were out of here like tomorrow, your 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 office manager is going to pick up that contract and they're going to take that, you know, the deal to closing or whatever. They should be able to read that inspection response and know exactly what needs to be done. You know, and that's what that's what's always very important. You know, make sure you convey the correct message from the buyer to the seller you know it should be very simple now remember the buyer should never have the expectation that everything should be done because you read the purchase agreement to them and they should understand that only major defects nicole in a perfect world i agree with you but Just that's, saying. that's why we're doing this video because it doesn't happen like that all the time no it doesn't <laughs> all right so now that you guys are all educated up to step three are you guys ready for number two i'm ready I, actually i can't hear them so. i know but yeah. I think they're ready. All five of them are ready. Yay! All right, all right. All right, let's see. Number two. Do you want it done by professionals? Again, this is a, this is about being very clear. Yep. Do you want it done by professional, licensed, bonded, insured companies? Or do you want it done by just any rando, you know? Yeah. Or Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe can do it. Yep. You know, he's only electrocuted himself three times. <laughs> he's fine. He knows what he's doing, you know? <laughs> do you want copies of invoices and receipts? Does your buyer expect to get copies of paperwork that they know it was done. If they do, 
then you 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 have to ask for it. Yeah. Hey, well, Kathy? I thought in the inspection response bill that Sasha. updated today uh, or updated this year, and it did say receipts have to be given regardless. I don't think it says that. It's in the inspection response itself. Oh, we didn't print that. We're not no. prepared for that one. But I'm pretty sure Sorry, it says everyone. it in there now. But a good idea, though. I don't though, think it does. I'm pretty sure it does. Is to add that you have to give like seven days prior to closing those receipts. Because if you don't, and the receipts are given at the closing table, and they're not full, or they're not done, or they're handwritten, you can't follow up and make sure that person's really a contractor. Um, and, you know, again, to Craig's point is, who is going to do it? Because if you don't write a license, person has to do it, or a handyman, or whoever... That means the seller can do it, and the seller can pick Uncle Bob to come over, you know, who had his own handyman business 50 years ago and is now retired, you know, and he slaps boards up there, and then you pull it down later, and it's all still rotted because they didn't actually replace it, they need to replace, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes little stuff like a GFCI outlet, I mean, it's a couple of screws. It's not that, it's not that a normal homeowner, I think, an average homeowner maybe can change that, but it's I like... I probably couldn't do that. What's that? I probably couldn't do that. I could probably, I really, I probably could be. If I, I mean, really I could wanted it, to, I, I probably shot. could. Yeah. Like you get my Home Depot book out, but yeah. um, I don't know to, if I'd say that. I'd have to watch some YouTube videos. Because you uh, would probably use the screwdriver that wasn't like rubber handled on the end. And oh, for would, sure. I'm getting <laughs> shocked at least once. <laughs> for sure. I'm, phone sorry. call. Sorry, Nicole got a phone call again. Um, but yeah, for sure I'm getting shocked at least once. Um, but yeah, so be very clear. What do you want? Do you want professionals to, you know, some things like, let's say, let's say the basement needs waterproofing or something like that. It's pretty popular in Northwest Indiana. Your buyer might say, I want it done by, and then specify a certain company, a foundation company or, or a waterproofing type company, something like that. You know, if you want to be that specific, go ahead. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's, that sometimes makes everyone's life a little easier. Yeah, I am very specific, very, very detailed in that because I want to know who's going to do it, that it's licensed person. So when I'm getting receipts back, I don't have to worry about it. You know what I mean? She doesn't have to worry about it. Do you know what she means? I think you do. <laughs> no, I don't know. Okay. Ready for number one. Our number one tip. This is almost a two-part tip too, by the way. But don't wait too long. If, if something's going to fall apart, let's say the buyer got really bad buyer's remorse or let's just say the house needs a lot of work and they weren't prepared for that um, and, they want, and they, they want to get out of the contract. First of all, you already would have told them if you represent the buyer. They can't. They have to give the seller the opportunity to correct major defects. Um, so they have, to, they have to ask that. Now, if the seller counters it or says, no, we're not doing something, you know, then you can submit a mutual release. You know, that's where I think a lot of agents get into trouble. And really, we've had trouble with small, like, small companies where it's the, like, a broker owner basically is the only agent there. So you have no one else to complain against or complain to. Like, they don't have a manager that can say, hey, stop being an idiot. You know, you, you, here's the problem. If the seller doesn't release the earnest money, that is an interest in the property. So the title companies will not close that property. So if a seller is mad, they want the buyer's earnest money, the buyer says, hey, I did an inspection. It needs some work. I, I'm requesting the work to be done. You're not going to do it. I'm out. I want my earnest money back. The buyer really should get their earnest money back. Yeah. You know, and a seller that wants to be hard headed and hold on to it, and it's really it's, they're shooting themselves in the foot in this seller's market every day that they you know they're losing in they're losing activity by sitting off the market. Hi, Talia. Are you watching us from Cancun, by the way? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a good place to be. So now that he's done talking for a little Right? Life, Jesus. So it's yeah, if it's, gonna, show. if it's gonna fall apart, don't hold on to it. It's not your job to figure out what a major defect is and what it isn't. It's not your job to tell the buyer what to ask for and what not to ask for. That's the buyer's job. You know, if they ask you your opinion, you should be telling them based on like appraisal or whatnot, like, hey, these things probably wanna pass appraisal. Remember, you're not a contractor. You have to walk a very fine line with inspection response. Um, you know, you may look at a report and think it's terrible and the buy you never know. The buyer may have a mom or dad who's been a contractor forever and none of that stuff bothers them. You know, go into the inspection response, get a feel for how your buyer thinks about the inspection. Hey, I got the report, I looked it over, how are you guys feeling? Like, you know, what repairs do you guys want done? Versus you going in there, oh you need to fix this and this and this and this and this. That's not your decision to make, that's the buyer's decision. It's not your decision. Yep. You're so very stay, bossy this morning. Stay in your lane. I'm always bossy. <laughs> stay in your lane. That's the big thing I can say. And special response lane. sticks in my craw. That's a big thing. Sticks in her craw, everyone. Yeah, for sure. So. All right. 
Well, I think that's uh, I think that's as much as we can uh, give you guys today. Yeah, I'm on vacation next week, so Craig swears we have a recorded video. I'm not sure that's true, so I have to go back and look. If we don't have a recorded video, then Craig's going to be here with a uh, guest next week, I think. Yeah, I might have to do that. Yeah. Might have to. Forgot about that. Yep. The Nicole and Craig show without Nicole. I wonder if, wonder what will happen. <laughs> Talia says, yeah, I'm laying on the beach. I wish I was laying on the beach, Talia. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, me too. True. <laughs> oh wait, I will be in like a day. Thanks. We should do a Nicole and Craig show live from somewhere else. Like Daytona. It's uh, pretty break. I, I guess. Yeah, we're old. What are we gonna do in Daytona? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Hey, spring break. I mean, like, it's past 9 30. Like, yeah. yeah. Hung over for three days. <laughs> no, anyway. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Happy Friday. Happy whatever. Happy inspection responses. Thanks for giving us better inspection responses forever. Send us ideas. Somebody gave Craig an idea at the dinner last night. He doesn't remember what it was. I'm calling him out right it. now. I forgot it. So please text him, whatever that was, that, because uh, he's like, no, it was really good, and I can't remember it, so. Someone did give me, yeah, it's like, <laughs> I, someone gave me a great record. I was like, yeah, that's a really good one, and then I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't remember. Didn't follow through, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I'm like, why don't you put it in your notes on your phone, like you may have an electronic, like, whatever. All right, I it's think we're done. I, I think people are done listening to us right now. I don't know. I think you get, like, all nervous about that. I didn't make your face turn red today. Dang it. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, so Hold on. Maybe I can make it to red. Ugh. That... Never mind what I... Anyway. <laughs> uh, never mind. Uh, uh -huh. Send us your ideas. Like, share. Thanks for watching as usual. We'll see you guys next week. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, guys. Do it. He